All right. Good morning, YouTube. Um, so like I said in the channel changes, channel updates, we're going to be doing some Python exorcism um, exercises, exercising. Uh, and we're just today, um, we're probably going to spend maybe two, two-ish hours, maybe two and a half hours, um, just getting the basic stuff out of the way. I could have done this on my own time. I thought I'd record it just because why not? I feel like we all pretty much know uh, <laughs> how Hello World works, right? Uh, whoops. Okay, done with exercise. And I've got, I've zoomed in a little bit. Hopefully this is a little bit easier to see. Uh, you know. We'll just see how far we can get today. Guido's gorgeous lasagna. Put me in the editor. Oh my. This is a lot. Oh, it's not. It's it's just what we did before. Okay. Dude, what am I looking at? What is all this? I've never seen this notation before. Mm. I listen, I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't recommend writing code like this. This is horrible. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, like it gums up. If if I was a if I was a, a Python beginner, like that's not what I would want to see. I'm zooming out a little bit. I hope you should still be able to see that. Um Okay. Calling functions. This is all very good. Big time. Let's uh big time remaining. N is going to be the number of minutes, and we're just going to return 40 minus M. Pretty simple. Let's run a test. Make sure that works. Oh. Okay. Got a constant. Missing. Oh my gosh. This is already less pleasant than uh, the Elixir one. Um, so I guess we got a um, we got to write all these functions. This is such a clunky experience, but we'll stick with it for now. Def uh, elapsed time in minutes. Layers. Big time. So we're just going to re return preparation time in. This is what they want you to use your function you've already written plus uh, big time uh, okay now let's see what we got here update the recipe with notes doc strings it really is gonna make me put doc strings huh
fun might not be the word I'd use, but numbers. This is horrible. I <laughs> like this is just not fun. Let's not do this. I don't want to look at this. This is so ugly. I I haven't seen very much Python code that looks like this. Let's look at docs.python. I want to find this Sphinx markup. That's what this is. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, uh, I don't recommend this at all, personally. I, I think this is a horrible way to write code. I think you'd be much better off uh, annotating, you know, annotating you know that's what this is I understand that this also has the the purpose but I, I'm, I'm not anti doc string you understand I'm, I'm anti uh, itemizing every single argument and return value in the source code that's that's a bit it's a bit preposterous uh, just just you know to me Uh, oh, well, I guess I should have looked at what I'm doing. What am I doing? You're exchanging unit value, exchange value. Okay. I mean, this is, is to me, um, perfectly adequate. So if that's what all these exercises are going to look like, then I am not about to do this. I can tell you that right now. Um, yeah, take me out of learning mode. Does, do they all look like this? Okay, see, like this looks pretty nice. Hmm. 
So silly. Okay. All right, so learning mode on exorcism is is uh, evidently what sucks. Yeah. There's so many learning modes. Take me out of here. Bro, get me out of learning mode for real. Okay. You know what? I'm going to we're going to we're going to do something different. We're going to do something different. Code Wars. Boom. Let's work some of these. What is this? You probably know the like system. People can like blog posts. We want to create the text that should be displayed. Implement the function which takes an array containing the names of people that like an item. Must return the display text as shown in the examples. Okay, okay, okay. This doesn't look too hard. Okay. Um I haven't I have never actually tried Python pattern matching by the way. I hope we I don't know what version of Python we're using. Um, oh, it's 3.11, okay. Let's uh, take a look at Python pattern matching. This seems like a good spot for it. Match case, okay. So, we want to uh, match on the len of names. Okay, easy there, fella. And then in the case of zero, we're gonna get rid of this. In the case of zero, uh, okay, so this, this shouldn't be too hard. We're just gonna return no one likes this. Okay. Cool. In the case of one, we're going to return um, the first item of names likes this. In the case of two, that is two likes, of course. Jacob and Alex. Okay, so we'll do um, let's let's hit some return statements here. By the way, I don't remember if it'll work or not. This that's one like being a polyglot and like working with multiple languages. I think it's easy to um, like mix and match some of the larger concepts, but it's always the small stuff that I forget. Like, can you do do single quote and double quotes both like interchange? Are they the same thing? Do I need to hit a return statement? Do I not need to hit a return statement? Uh, that sort of stuff. Because it's, you know, it's just binary things like that. Because it just ends up being like two to the power of however many languages you're familiar with. Uh, and I've been looking at... Um, different Kotlin and Scala lately. Uh, I'm just checking on my daughter real quick. She had a diaper. Uh, Alright, so for the case of two, we'll do... Um, so, the first one will be names, zero, and... Or no, no, close that. And names, one, like this. Okay. For the case three, 
return. This isn't beautiful, by the way, but it will get the job done. I mean, I'm gonna pull up a uh, REPL. Oh, you can't see my REPL because I'm not in the right mode here. How hard would that be to fix, I wonder? Um, All right, I guess we'll go ahead and just fix it. Let's do a display capture. Yeah. And then a window capture will delete. And then we'll put this like this. And now if I go like this. Ah, <laughs> it wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad at all. Okay. Here's what I want to know. This is a simple thing. Let's say A equals... One, two, three, four, five. Can I do like the length of A from the second or third element onwards? Ah, I can. Okay, so there's a there's a clever way to do this next clause. Um like this. Okay, in the case of four or more, which we will call um yeah for all other cases i know what it's going to do though is it's going to find there's going to be like a you know an edge case that i haven't con considered all right in the case of of any other one we have zero one two three we're going to return F uh, names first item uh, names second item and the length of so starting at two right okay so length of names starting from two onwards others like this yeah can i can't change the thing okay this looks good to me let's uh let's see let's see if she goes Pass them tests. We got them. Passed 45 tests. Don't mind me. Who are all these people? Okay. Uh, well, great. Pattern matching. How about that? We'll see what the uh, what the real professionals came up with. Ooh. I've ranked up. Uh, you can't see it, but I have ranked up. I'm just looking at this one. This is wild. So he's returning this is a dictionary that we're then indexing 
minimum of so whatever's smaller four or n so if n is three then it takes n and then formats that using the old format style now dot names now if i if i if i can understand that correctly so let's okay so let's say names equals you me youtube millions of fans okay so if i do star names from three what do i get can't you start expression here okay how about z equals can't you start expression here huh Oh. Oh. So it is taking three. Oh, of course it is. It's it's the colon first. What am I talking about? Listen, don't listen to me. Okay. Oh, this is taking the first two, and then others is n minus two. n is the length. Okay, so that is pretty smart. So it's just taking the first two and then the length minus two. Pretty smart. I think this would be a little bit clearer getting rid of this n and then having others equals length of names minus two my personal take but uh this is this is very clever this is basically what i wrote with a little bit less um you know pizzazz dictionary well that's basically what he wrote with a lot of comments <laughs> matching yeah Oh, that's cool. You can use it like that. Oh, that's neat. So he's got different patterns here. He's destructuring into into individual um, named variables, which is cool because um, then you can just do. Yeah, this is very straightforward. I honestly, I think this is probably really the best one. I think it's the the most obviously clear. I would rename A, B, and C and rest to first name, second name, or or first user, second user, third user. Right? That might be a better way to do it. But and then on and on into into crazy town. Cool. See, let's see my, my breakdown. 6K, that's my kata. I've completed 40. Did some in, I did one in Julia. Ruby, Crystal, Lua, Crystal. Cool. All right, Python, what do we got here? Digital root is the recursive sum of all the digits in a number. This doesn't seem that hard. So, 
what, what do we want here? We want, let's say, Q equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, that's our Q. So, let's say int Well, do we need uh, like a nested comprehension here? We could do something like this. Um, int s for s in quote quote dot join q and have that be like that. Uh, I can only join an iterable. Um, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. That makes sense. Oh, what about a string of a uh, Q? There we go. Okay, right here, I'll drag this over so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so we're just doing int s for s in empty string dot join string Q. Q is our number here. Okay, so that's our digits. Um, okay, so let's say our uh, sum equals And just change the Q to N. And so what we want is if oh, what is easy? If sum is less than ten, or no, no. If it's greater than or equal to ten. Then we return digital root of sum, and it'll just recurse that way. Else, return sum. Am I like? Am I dumb? Oh yes. Ooh, look at us! Look at us programming for real. Sum is a built-in, right? Yeah. So we're going to sum this entire thing before, boom, this should work. Ah, oh, it didn't work. We didn't pass any of them. What happened here? Sum. Oh, okay. Well, that does make sense now. Uh, you know, actually it's funny. This is probably the first time I've ever run into this issue. In all my years of programming, I've never run into the issue of accidentally naming a variable a built-in. Because I'm always like, who would name their thing just len when they know len is a function, right? But here I am. Um, so we'll call this digit sum. Digit sum. Digit sum. Digit sum. Okay, and let's try this. Boom. I think it's pretty good. What is this? This is some sort of math nerd. Right, because there's got to be something. Okay, hold on, hold on. So, like, if it's 45. Five, right 
that's 9, which is less than 10. 45 mod 9, of course, is 0. So if I say 45 mod 9 or 10, I get back 10. Oh, because 0 short circuits it. So does mod 9 always work, though? Like, when does it... Oh, it's and nine. Why, if I take, I assume if I take away and nine, it doesn't work. So, what if it's, what if it's 46, okay? Mod nine, we get one. So one or 46, of course, gives us one. So, Oh, but you know what? 4 plus 6 is 10. 1 plus 0 is 1. Okay, okay, okay. What about 47? Mod 9. Oh, I'm sensing a freaking pattern here. That's That's wild. That is wild. That is so insanely clever. You know, I think honestly, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it real. I think Code Wars is honestly such an amazing platform for learning because, like, this is how you learn. I I I was I was in rehab for a while, and we had this guy who who came and taught us these lessons. This was during uh, level five, which is like the last month that you're there. It's a six month residential program and so his class was kind of more freestyle he was only there for like three or four days a month and he would teach his class one of his his things is um this coin challenge where he gives everybody a bunch of pennies okay he's got a couple dollars in pennies with him everybody gets a bunch of pennies and i forget the exact setup to the problem but the thing is you have to arrange the pennies so that there's a certain amount in each row right but then you when you when you start on this you're like man i don't have enough pennies <laughs> i don't remember the exact the exact way that it went right let's see if it, if we can illustrate this cuz it was like oh jeez i'm never going to i'm never going to remember right cuz it's like um something like this but then the second uh, one of the pennies of course goes oh no that's not what I want uh, like that or something that seems too simple to be it is that it Anyways, <laughs> the lesson is, you know, as one person figures it out, you know, you're looking around the room and it's a classroom setting. There's like, you know, long tables. It's like a college classroom. You know, you have uh, like five or six long tables. Everyone sits in, in rows and, um, you know, you're, you're screwing around with your pennies trying to get them stacked up properly to meet, meet the problem. And eventually you'll notice someone's done it because they stopped moving around. They've stopped messing with their pennies. And so you just look like, what's he doing? You know? And then you're like, oh, 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 yeah. And then you do your pennies. And that's the lesson. The lesson is oftentimes one person figures something out. Everyone else around them will figure it out too. And I think... It's such a simple lesson, right? Because the lesson is basically just cheat off of people around you. But it's not cheating. Uh, you know, there's nothing at stake. There's no grade in this situation. Like, that's what makes it okay. And that's why I think it is a genuinely good exercise. Um, because it, it illustrates that, you know, ideas are a, a form of communication um, worth exploring and having. And this is a great way to look at people's ideas. I guess that's all I'm trying to say is that Code War is is so cool. Um, 
because you can then see like look at this what is this what is this doing Oh, this is just summing it in a dumb way. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, I, I, and here I was feeling good about what I had wrote, feeling very clever. This one has got to be, I mean, that, that takes the cake. That's one of the most clever solutions to any Code Wars problem I've ever seen. Not that I'm like an expert. I've only done like 40 of these, but wow. All right, back to the front. Let's see what else we got. Seven, I want, I want me a, you know, uh, we got to get me a six, buddy. Bouncing balls. Okay, a child is playing with a ball on the nth floor of a tall building. The height of this floor above ground level H is known. He drops the ball out of the window. The ball bounces two-thirds. Okay. How many times will the mother see the ball pass in front of her window, including when it's falling and bouncing? Okay. That's <laughs> so stupid. Oh, come on, lady. What are you going to be looking out your window for anyways? So, I'm in a building at some distance. A ball is being bounced at some other distance. The question is, it's going to fall at least... I mean, the minimum is one. If the height is higher than me, right? The minimum is one. Okay, well, interesting. So if the height is lower than me, then it's zero. I would never see the ball. Okay, so I'm going to see the ball at least once if it's higher than me. What determines if I'm going to see it again? I would never see it an even number of times. Because I'm going to see it at least once if it's above me and it goes by. If I see it again going up past me, then I have to see it come back down. Okay, so it will be one, three, five, seven. Okay, so it's gonna be in that sequence somewhere. Okay. Um, The ball can only be seen if the height of the rebounding ball is strictly greater than the window parameter, so not equal to. Got it. Oh, shoot. Put me in here. Let's try. It's only been 39 minutes. We got two more hours of this? <laughs> I do love programming. But... Okay, return minus one. Um... Well, so uh, H is greater than zero and um, bounce greater than zero, greater than zero and bounce less than one. Um, and window less than H. If not, Hold on here. You tell me I can't write an if. If not, so this is just um, like verifying that all these conditions are met.
Okay. So if one of these condi conditions aren't met, uh, this thing should short circuit and return a negative one, which is what it wants. All right. So. <sighs> Here's the thing. Let's say this is this is wild, man. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do this in a very imperative way. Uh, I'm just warning you now. Um, If the window, let's say window equals three, bounce equals 0 0.66, and height equals 20, okay? So, starting from here, we're gonna drop the ball. Okay. Is there, there, I wonder, there's got to, I know, here's, <laughs> this, this is another thing that happens with Code Wars though, is that I know I'm gonna code this out as like a little loop and a counter, right? And it's gonna work. And then I'm gonna hit test and it's gonna work. Or maybe I'll have forgotten something and I'll fix it. And eventually I'm gonna hit submit and I'm gonna get green and it's gonna go, okay? And then I'm gonna see someone with like, uh, you know, a three line, you know, 40 byte solution uh, where there's some math nerd crap <laughs> that I don't know. Uh, and, and, and they, they goose me, you know, that's what I'm currently thinking about. Okay. So Bounces equals one. Okay. And then let's just say while ball equals H. Okay, while ball is greater than window. We're gonna do bounces plus equals two. And then ball times equals bounce. So let's see what this does. And then we're just gonna return ball. No, 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 we're gonna return bounces. Oops. No, three should equal one. Okay, so we're we're two off somewhere. I mean, I I understand that, but
I mean, we could say bounces equals negative one and then do this. But I don't think it's gonna work. It's gonna fail some tests. Is something going on? Am I crazy or should this be working? <sighs> Pass all the tests. I know this while loop is a little, you know, scary, but. See this, this makes me think that there's a case that's screwing it up somehow. Our servers are configured to only allow a certain time. Okay, so what's... Is there like a super high window or something? That wouldn't be it. Let's do this, else let's put all this other stuff in an else just in case. I don't think that's it, but let's, let's try it. No, I don't think that's it either. Hmm. That's not it. What would cause this to spin out of control? Ball greater than window. I mean, bounce has to be greater than zero and less than one. Let's say in bounces less than 15. Interesting. Okay, well, let's say less than 150. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, something is wrong with our conditions. I'm glad we can check that now. So... H must be greater than zero.
I I don't understand So like here's one. One should equal negative one. Which means it returned it got one and then returned bounces minus two. So it it this this never ran here. Which means ball was not greater than window. Which means H was not greater than window. So something's screwy with, with here, because window has to be less than h. I mean, should I do this backwards? h greater than window? That, that, that shouldn't change anything. One forty nine should equal negative one. I, I want to know what this test is giving. Oh my god. Wait, if I print something, does it run? Mm. Okay. Well, then you know what? Here's what we're going to do. <laughs> okay. So the test is under it. Okay. This is 4110. So the H. Oh. So it's getting one, a bounce of one. This is not greater than zero. Is it? I, I mean, I, I, I'm like losing my mind here. Negative one. That's bounce. Bounce must be greater than zero. Do I need to wrap this whole thing in parentheses? Don't tell me this works, by the way. I'll be, I'll be, dude. Oh my god. I'm not even going to fix this. Uh let's let's just get rid of this. I mean this this has just been a tragedy. What a waste of time. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is pretty much. Uh, this is the part I was missing. This is the part that could have, that's what I couldn't think of to make my code simpler. 
Because that that's what I was doing, like, plus equals 2, return it minus 2. I was like, this doesn't... This, something's not right here. I couldn't think of it. Yeah, I like that a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nerd detected. <laughs> Look at this guy being all smart. Let's go look at him. Let's go bully him. He's Swedish, that's why. All Swedes are smart. I don't know if you know that, but... Yep, and he's our Erlanger. All Erlangers are smart, too. <laughs> oh, he's done a 2K. Oh, my God. <laughs> How annoying would that be? Oh, dude. Yeah, no, this is this is brutal. I, what's not? You know what I almost said? I think I can do this. Tribonacci. Oh, you don't even got to tell me nothing. I hear Onachi and I'm in. Oh, I see. So it's just like three. Cool. That implies the existence of like Quattronacci is that Quattronacci big true okay yeah sure no um works basically like a Fibonacci my assumption then is that this could get very, very large, but very quickly. Okay. Uh, if we were to start a Tribonacci sequence with one, 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 we have this sequence, one, 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 three, five, nine, 17. But if, what if we start with zero, zero, one? Then we get one, two, four, seven, 13. The math does add up. Basically shifts the common Fibonacci sequence by one place. Okay, so what I'm sorry, what's being asked of me here? Exponacci. This has got to be a oh no. Let's all right, stop fooling around. The signature will always include or will always contain three numbers. N will always be a non negative number. What is N? What do they want from me? They want N number of of okay, so they want that many digits is that correct what's up with this this should be three no
Okay, so it's saying. Oh, the first end element signature included, which means this first element is just a one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So. And how do we get the last three? So let's say we still have our A. Yeah. If I want three, four, five, I want negative three. Okay. Is that always going to be the case? What? Why did you do it? This should be 79. Nice. Okay. Um, well, so we will, here's what we'll do. If, um, that, I hope that wasn't too loud. I just caught my mouse cord. Uh, if um, if the if if n is less than three, or or equal to three, right? Then we will just return. signature up to n, right? Because like that would be the first two, the first three. Okay. Um, hello, what are, you, what are you doing to me? Okay. Otherwise, while length of uh, we'll just use the signature array this is a little dirty but is um, less than or equal to n no if it's less than n right because when it gets to be equal no, no it's when it's less than or equal because it needs to run on the ninth time it must run again to 10 it doesn't need to run when it's 10 if it's 10 hello Okay, while it's less than n, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to signature.append the result of summing signature index negative 3 like that. Right. Right. And then at the end, we're just going to return signature. Uh, but that'll be under the else. Okay. Oh, 4,000? What an absurd... And there it is. So basically what we're doing is just taking that signature array and extending it. Well, I guess to you that would be... <laughs> okay, we're taking the array and we're extending it. All right, because here's the first three. First three. 
Dude, okay, this is bad. All right, here's the first three. And then we just extend it with the fourth. Check if it's uh, N, which is the number of things they're asking for. Because if it's less than, if it's three or less, then we don't need to do any of this, right? Uh, but otherwise, we just extend it with the last three elements, sum that, plop that here. Then we do that again. The last three elements is now this, which will go here. Okay. Then the last, uh, well, and then we check that. Take the new last three elements, put that here. Check that. Take the new, new last three elements. Put that here. Check it. You understand. It's pretty simple. You see this chicken scratch I've drawn. You can clearly see the algorithmic implications. Okay. That's that. Let's see. Somebody, I'm sure, did something absurdly clever. And the solutions. Oh, oh, well, see, that's exactly what I did. Basically, it's a lot smarter. Okay, well, can't hate. I don't know if I got another hour in me. Pretty large, perfect squares, but what about the next one? Isn't this really easy? Okay. Return the next square if squ is a square negative one otherwise. So what we'll do, let's like just check. 6.5 mod one is 0.5, right? Okay, so um, to just to double check, right? Because 6.0 mod one. What did I just do? Yeah, I'm screwing up here. Okay, so return negative one if not uh, square root equals an integer. Then also, um, so. Otherwise, we're just going to return um, well, let's let n equals math dot square root of sq. And honestly, let's just do this. return negative one else in this way it's nicer 
n equals because this is only this else is only ever going to run when it is a square. n equals square root of square uh, plus one, and we're just going to return n times n. Seems like really simple. Oh, it didn't work. Um, math is not defined from math import. Okay, how about just import math then, buddy boy. Boom. Because if it's a square, we just need the square root plus one will be the next square. Am I crazy? Well, I assume that's what they're gonna do. Is integer. Oh, that's a nice one. <laughs> Who knew that's a thing? Okay, okay. Ooh, that's also pretty sick. I mean, that's a very like code golf. Uh, Yeah, no, sick. All right. Build tower. Not today. We'll do it next time. I gotta I gotta I gotta get something to eat and go to sleep, I think. I gotta work. But we will we will do this one. I will add this page to my favorites. Uh next time we will we will do build tower. This doesn't look too hard because you can calculate how big uh the floor is gonna need to be. Because it should just be one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So it'll be n times two minus one, right? If it's six, it's twelve minus one is eleven. So in calculating that, you can know up front what the padding is going to need to be. Otherwise, like build tower advanced is probably wild because I bet that the solution requires you to build the tower and then go back and add padding based on some fancy, uh, you know, condition. You can do some pretty fancy looping, you know, but Okay, it's been real been fun been great been awesome Thanks for watching. Well, I think we'll exorcism really has got a uh, got on my nerves they got to get rid of learning mode learning mode is miserable i would happily solve programming problems but i think we're going to stick to code wars um i would much rather learn this way myself uh but exorcism is a nice tool I'm not going to say it's not it is um it's the little things okay uh love you bye